Hi Software 2, welcome to your very first coding video. I am so excited for you to get coding and start seeing what you guys are making this year. I know that this is new to a lot of us and so we are going to get started very slowly and once you guys get comfortable with the basics we can start moving a little faster and doing some cool things. So the very first thing that we are going to start with is just making you an account in the P5 editor. So I have gone ahead and clicked that link that is located in your um, asynchronous work. But if you don't want to click that link, you can go to editor.p5js.org, which is at the top here. And when you do, you'll be taken to a page that looks just like this one. So the first thing you're going to want to do before we start noticing anything about this page is just to make an account and then make sure that you're logged into that account. So in the top right hand corner, you're going to see two options, log in or sign up. And for I think everybody, you're going to need to click the sign up button. When you click the sign up, you'll have the option of making an account or just signing up with Gmail. I'm going to recommend that you go ahead and sign up with Google. Um, if you do decide to just make an account here, you're still using your school email. You just have the option of picking a username, um, but being able to sign in with your email is much longer. If you do pick a username, please just remember that I will be able to see your username, so it needs to be school appropriate since you'll be using it all year. Once you have your account, um, you might need to go to your email to verify some things, but once that's set, you'll be logging in. So go ahead and just click this login button. Um, mine is automatically saved, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. And then you'll know you're logged in. We're now in the right corner. It says, hello, C. Morgan Twills. So in the editor, there's a bunch of things that we need to just be aware of. Um, first is that there's these things across the top, file, edit, sketch, and help, which we'll be using quite a bit. There is this space to write code on the side, and then there's a preview space where your code shows up after you hit the play button. So you can see right now hitting play gives me this rectangle um, that shows up gray. That's something you can mess around with. You will also see that you have a place where you can change the name of your project. It should always give you a very random name at first, and we're going to talk about renaming in just a second. And then on the side here, you see this settings wheel where you can mess with what is showing up on your screen. Um, I tend to make my text size really, really big, and that is because you guys who are following along with me have to read it. Um, you do not need to make your text size 32, but adjust it to something that makes sense to you. Um, I would not mess with these last two settings, but you can also change the theme of your editor. You can change it to a dark theme or a high contrast theme. I tend to leave mine on light, and that is mostly because when I am teaching you guys, that tends to be the easiest to read. Um, but maybe I will change that as we are working. So go ahead and feel free to pick the one that makes sense to you, and then meet me back here. As we go through this video, if at any time you need time to mess with something or you want to play, just hit pause then come back to this video when you are ready. So now moving forward, um, we have this very randomly named project. We are going to change that name to something more useful. So click the pencil right next to that name, and we are going to rename this 0 0.1.1. .1. And that means we are in unit 0, week 1, lesson 1. Um, and then after that, we are going to give it a name, and I'm going to call this project Hello Ellipse. And Ellipse is spelled E-L-L-I-P-S-E. -L -L -E. And then you can hit enter, and your project will be renamed Hello Ellipse. Once you've named your project, a really important habit that we need to get into is saving our work. The P5 editor technically has autosave, but it doesn't always work, and it definitely won't work if you have not hit save the first time. So you're going to go up to File at the top of the page, and then you are going to click Save. Once you've clicked Save, you'll see that Sketch is saved, Auto Save is enabled, and you'll also see that you have this very long URL at the top that now includes your username, it has the word Sketches, it has a bunch of letters. This is how you know you've saved your project, and whenever I ask to collect a link from you, this is what I'm asking about. And we'll get back to that at the end. Um, so again, if you haven't done this, go ahead and hit pause, change your project name to 0.1.1 .1, Hello Ellipse, that's the name of this lesson, and then go to File, click on Save, um, and then meet me back here when you're ready. So once you guys are ready to go, we can see that we have this project, but it's pretty boring, and if we look at the code, we see that right now our code is comprised of two functions. We have this one called Function Setup, and we have one called Function Draw. Inside of each of those, there's a single function that makes something happen. So in setup, 
we have it creating a canvas for us. And this is deciding how big this gray box is going to be. So if you'd like, you can pause now and mess with these numbers a little bit. If I were to change, um, let's change this, yeah, this first number to 800, you're gonna see that now I have a much longer, skinnier canvas where I can actually scroll from side to side. If I change it from 200, you can see that it makes this little small guy. And then I can also change this other number. Let me change it to 100 so it gets small and then back to 400 so it gets big. This is just deciding the space that you're gonna be creating in. So I'm gonna keep mine at 400, 400 to make it easy. Um, inside of the draw function, you will also see that you have a background function and background decides the color that's happening behind here. So right now it's gray. Um, at this point in time, you can change it to any number between zero and 255. So if I change it to zero, you'll see that it turns black. If I change it to 255, it'll be perfectly white. And if I change it back to 220, it'll be gray. I would encourage you to play with um, those values and just get to something you like. And then we're going to start writing our first lines of code. So I'm going to be writing my code always inside of one of these setup or draw functions. And what we mean by inside is between these two curly braces. So for setup, I can see that I have a curly brace on line one. And when I put my mouse next to it, it boxes this curly brace on line three. Those two go together, and anytime my mouse is between those two, so right now lines two, line three, line four are all between those curly braces, that means I'm writing inside of the setup function. What we are going to be doing right now is writing inside of the draw function. So that means that I am between line six and line eight. Between these two curly braces means I'm inside the draw function. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor at the end of line seven, at the end of that background line, and I'm just gonna, gonna hit enter a few times to give myself some space. And then we are gonna start by coding our very first circle. So I am going to write in this function the word ellipse. It is E-L-L-I-P-S-E. -L -L -E. This is a word that the computer has already been taught. It knows the word ellipse and it knows how to take the word ellipse and draw circles from it. This is something that in code we call a function and functions are always followed by parentheses. Now the stuff that goes inside the parentheses is the information that the computer needs in order to make this program run correctly. So think of it kind of like a recipe. If I told you to make spaghetti, there's things that you need to know in order to make spaghetti. You need to know like how much pasta, um, are you using thin noodles or thick noodles, what type of sauce, how much sauce, how long do you cook for? And to draw a circle, the computer also needs some information. The computer to draw a circle means at least three and sometimes four numbers in order to draw my circle. So I'm just gonna start out by giving it three kind of random numbers. All of these values are gonna be separated by a comma. So I'm gonna start with 100, 150, and 75. Again, you should be writing this in your code as well. So if you need a break, hit pause so that you can type this inside your draw function. Once you have it, go ahead and hit play, and you should see that you have a circle on your screen. Now to figure out what all these numbers do, we can practice changing their values one at a time until we think we have a good grasp of what they do. So for example, I might start with this 100. If I only change this 100 to 200 and I hit play, I see that my circle has moved to the right of the canvas. And if I change it to 300, I see it's moved even farther to the right. If I change it to 50, it's moved back to the left. So that's something that I might want to make a note of. Um, and I can make notes in P5 and in all code editors by leaving code comments, which are things the computer will not read, but that are there for me. So I'm going to go ahead and write ellipse. And the first number controls the X value, which is my left and right. And then I'm going to go ahead and figure out my second number. So my second number, if I hit it at 250, we see that it moves down. If I change it to just 50, it moves up. And if I change it to 100, it's somewhere in the middle. So I'm gonna say that that second number represents the Y value um, or the up and down motion on my page, just like the coordinate planes that you guys usually see in math class. So now I'm gonna mess with that last number. Um, let's go from 75 to 200, let's make a big jump. And I see that my circle has gotten a lot bigger. So I'm gonna test my theory that this controls size by changing it from 200 to 20. And I see that I now have a very tiny circle. 
So I'm going to change that 20 back to 50, hit play, and I'm going to make a note that this controls the diameter. Um, and then I said there's an optional fourth value. So let's go ahead and put a comma in and let's try giving this a fourth value of, I don't know, 90 and hit play. And I see that when I put in the 90, now it stretches this out into an oval. So I'm going to call that like second diameter. Um, it's not really truly a diameter, but it's controlling like, do I want this to be a perfect circle or do I want it to be stretched out? And I can also experiment with flopping these, so now I have an oval going in the other direction. Again, if I only have three, my ellipse is a circle. If I have four, it turns into an oval. So here's what you guys are going to do now. Um, you guys are going to drop down a few lines so that you are in the draw function and you are still between these two curly braces. Make sure that you are not down here beneath the curly brace. That would mean you are outside of the draw. I want you guys to try and draw another ellipse somewhere on this page. So you guys are going to write ellipse, you're going to have your parentheses, and then you guys are going to practice filling in your own three or four numbers to draw your very first ellipse. Once you guys have added that one ellipse, um, go ahead and try and add one more so you have a grand total of three on this page. And then once you are done, you're going to go up to file and hit the save button to make sure all of your changes are saved. Once they are saved, you're going to take this link at the top. You're going to copy it. So you can either do a right click or a two finger click to copy, or you can use the hotkey shortcuts hitting command C or control C if you are on a Mac um, or alt C, I believe if you're on a, or if you're on a PC. Then you guys are going to paste that into your asynchronous work and go ahead and answer those questions. Um, enjoy it. Please shoot me an email if you have any questions or come to office hours and we'll get you sorted out. This does not need to make sense, does not need to make any type of pattern. We are just practicing writing our very first lines of code today. Good luck!